All right, Shalom, Shalom. This is Azam Wath once again with another quick lesson. Uh, before we get started, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakadash. And that's all praises to the Heavenly Father and Son's name, who the world in the call Jesus Christ. Real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. And also giving uh, honor and glory unto the Holy Spirit, uh, which is the source, which is the power. Um, so we can actually. Uh, give edifying videos and teach our people, right? And uh, and go into things like we're about to go into right now. So um, so today, I just really kind of want to touch upon um, the nature of prophesying, right? The nature of prophesying. Um, you know, we understand well that you know here recently, you know, uh, the the influx of uh, the large group or, or large portion of our people waking up coming back to their true nationality, understand that the Israelites, they're repenting. Um, you know, it's beautiful, right? That's a beautiful thing that's, that's been happening, this prophecy, right? But we also have to remember something. There's a nature in what's been going on in regards to the teaching, in regards to the teachings of it, and in regards to the prophesying, right? Because when we look into uh, the patterns of the prophets of old, right? They weren't here on the scene for a long time, right? And prophets were here. For a little bit and then as soon as they left destruction came right as soon as they left destruction came prime example look at noah right he he preached in a short uh, amount of time right now granted you know some scholars would say it was 100 years some would say it was 120 years right but <laughs> think about how long people lived back then they were living up till they were, you know five six seven eight hundred nine hundred years old right 120 years it's not a long time right so, and how much more, you know, would it be today? You know, our lifespan is what, 80 years, if that, All right? So, uh, so someone out there prophesying and teaching diligently, you know, for 10, 20 years, listen, man, you gotta, we gotta understand the nature of these prophecies, right? So, so knowing that the Most High God has set prophets and set teachers upon the scene here in these latter days, right? To reprove um, and, and to also give warning to our people and also to the other nations, right? To, to rebuke them. Uh, just know that this isn't gonna last for a long time, right? So with all that being said, we need to give the more uh, diligent heed to, to what we've heard, man, right? Because, let me get this real quick. Let me get this in Hebrews. This is Hebrews 2. It says this, it says, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard Right. Yeah. Our people, we hear. Right. Uh, we hear edification videos going out. We see the brothers on the street corners. Right. Uh, you know, we hear we may hear some of our family members that's in the truth or whatnot. Right. So we got to give them more earnest heed to those things. Why? Let's say any time they should slip. Right. Because this is this is mercy that the most high God has bestowed upon us by the simple fact that he's waking us up to our true nationality and he's allowed us to receive these truths allow us to receive these instructions and warnings because that's all prophecies are all prophecies are is just really warnings man right the most high god is giving you a heads up right ahead of all these other nations of people and multitudes of people to tell you what he's going to do man right because he's only he's only given the the mind and the ears and the heart uh to certain to only a certain people a certain um group of people to actually receive these warnings, right? Because anyone can crack open his Bible, right? And, and see that, oh man, he's gonna destroy Babylon with fire. Okay, well, if it doesn't, if you don't have faith mixed with that, and if you don't know, you know what I'm saying, what Babylon is, well, who Babylon is, and the, and the details, right, that he's given unto his servants and prophets, that warning <laughs> is gonna to totally escape you, right? It's gonna go over your head. So it's gonna do you no good, right? So so let's uh, let's open up with this real quick. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6 and 10. It says, to whom shall I speak and give warning? Yeah. Once again, that's what these prophecies are. They're warnings, right? All the Most High God wants to do is to warn his elect, right? He says that they may hear. Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Meaning when it says your ear is uncircumcised, meaning that <laughs> your ear isn't functioning, functioning the way it's supposed to. Right, <laughs> you can't hear anything. It says, "Behold, the word of Yahweh is unto them a reproach, 
they have no delight in it. Yeah. And we see that all the time, man, because our people, they truly don't give for the, for the large majority, truly don't give credence and, 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 uh, and reverence into these prophecies, man, because you can get on Facebook, you know, and you see how people are just bugging out, you know, they don't really, they don't think about, they don't think upon the things that's been commanded of them, such as giving heed to those prophecies. Let me pull that up real quick. That's a good precept. Um, you know, just get bugged out in all types of uh, buffoonery, man. You know, this is a uh, Sirach chapter three. Uh, where's this chapter five? So locks lock. lock. Uh, let's see, let's see here. That's all right. We'll get it later. We'll get it later. Um, yeah. So basically, with that script, let me let me turn to it in my Bible because I really do want to get that. Bear with me, real quick. Think upon what the commanded of you. Yeah, I had it right. Sirach three and twenty one. All right, it says. Seek not out the things that are too hard for thee, neither search the things that are above thy strength, right? And that's a, a common thing that we see happen amongst our people, the repentant Israelites. They're seeking out and they're searching things that's above their strength, right? Wanting to know each and every single little breakdown for everything, man. Listen, I mean, would that be helpful? Absolutely be helpful, right? But we need to stick to the most pertinent issues and, and things at hand. And that is... <laughs> Knowing who you are, knowing what you need to do, keeping the law, such commandments, having the faith in Yahweh Shah, right? Knowing who your enemy is, right? So you can stay far away from him as much as possible, right? And leave it at that, right? <laughs> and the Most High God is going to take care of everything else. You don't need to know what the, the seven vows are. You don't need to know what the, uh, 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 you know, uh, who all the beasts are. Not saying that those things won't be helpful because obviously they are. You know, I look into those things myself. Right, but first and foremost, you need to get a good foundation, right? Because if you don't, man, you're gonna find yourself out of the truth, right? Because you're seeking out things that are far above your strength and you're gonna to totally bug out. All right, so this is verse 22, he says, But what is commanded thee, think thereupon with reverence. And what's commanded of us to take heed to his word, especially the uh, the, the laws and the prophecies, man. Right? <laughs> That's what's commanded of us. He says, for it is not needful for you to see, for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. Yeah, because there's just some things that the Most High God just got in reserve, right? Right, so no one can truly know right now. Even Paul says that we prophesy in part, right? There's only certain things in these prophecies that we can break down through the Spirit, right? And the, and the rest is not really needful for us to know right now because we have everything pertaining to life and godliness. Let me get that real quick. I want to say that's first Peter. First Peter. Um yeah. Uh I didn't even uh, I didn't plan on going here. See, yeah, first Peter one. It says, um, it says, Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord, Yahusha Mashiach, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Yahusha Hamashiach from the dead. Because this is a hope that we have, right? He says this. Uh he says, um, so like, is this what I want? Where is it? Life and godliness. First Peter one, second Peter. It's a lot. Second Peter. Yep, second Peter one three. I'm sorry about that, y'all. Says, <clears throat> I'm sorry, verse two. He says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Yahweh Shah, our Lord according as his divine power 
have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. You see, he's giving us everything pertaining to life and godliness, man. Right. So going back to Sirach, when he says, think thereupon. Sirach 3 and 22, but what is commanded thee, think thereupon with reverence, for it is not needful for you to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. Yeah, he's already given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. So the way you need to live a, a godly lifestyle, that has been made known unto you. That has been given unto you, right? He says, through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. You see? So that's all we need, man. So, so without that being said, let's go back. Let's go back to, uh, to Jeremiah 6 and 10. Jeremiah 6 and 10. It says, to whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear, All right? Once again, these prophecies is nothing but <clears throat> basically a death threat, man, All right? It's a death threat, but only a certain uh, few, only a remnant will actually decode and understand that death threat, man, <laughs> because this book has been in the hands of many people, not knowing that this is a death threat. They may see, you know, once again, that, that the Most High God has some type of plot of terror, but once again, with, with it not being mixed with faith and them not having the spirit, it's going to go over their head, right? So let's go to the book of Psalms real quick. Psalms 19 and 11. He says, moreover, by them, speaking of these prophecies, by them is thy servant warned. Yeah, through these prophecies, you're warned, man, right? That's why it's, it's pertinent to stick to these prophecies. You don't need to know about every single little breakdown, right? <laughs> It's not needful for you. Not saying it's not going to be helpful, but first and foremost, we need to understand these prophecies because this is the spirit that's going to be upon the, the hopeful elect in the last days, right? Which was uh, contained in, uh, in the book of Revelation 19 and 10. It said that the spirit of Yahweh is a spirit of prophecy, right? He says, moreover by them is our servant warned and in keeping of them, keeping of what? These prophecies, these warnings. In keeping of them, there is great reward. Yeah, what do you think that reward is going to be? Salvation. Salvation. <laughs> That's what that reward is going to be, right? So let's go here. Let's go here. Uh, take a look at the nature, a little bit of the nature of the prophets, right? He says, I'm starting verse 15. And this is why the most I got sent them out, right? And now, uh, as a matter of fact, let me get this verse. Second Chronicles 20. He says, and they rose early in the morning, right? Speaking of these prophets, and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in Yahweh your God, so ye shall be established believe his prophets so shall you prosper yeah when you believe his prophets you're ultimately believing in yahweh while yahweh shot right because we're coming up under that same banner and in his stead when he said in matthew 28 he says lo i'm with you all the way even to the end of the world all right well obviously he's not with us today here bodily so how do you think he's with us <laughs> through his word and through his men right so when you believe his prophets you by default believe in him. All right, so let me get this real quick. John 20. It says, uh, John 20, 21. says, then Yahusha, then said Yahusha to them again, peace be unto you as my father has sent me, so I send you. You see? So we're coming up under that same stead. Yahusha was sent of his father, and now he's sending us. That is how he is here with us all the way to the end of the world. So when you believe on us, when you believe on the ones who were sent from Yahweh Shah, you're believing on the one who Yahweh Shah was sent from, which is the Most High God. You see, it works in full effect. It's, it's aligned fully. Um, it's aligned perfectly, right? So let's go here to uh, Second Chronicles 36. I'm going to start at verse 15. It says, and Yahweh... And Yahweh God of their father sent to them by his messengers. All right. Who are these messengers? These prophets, right? He says, rising up betimes, meaning they're rising up diligently. All right. 
and you go into that word diligently in the Greek, all right, it literally means to make an occupation out of. So their occupation was to rise up and warn the people, all right? He says in, uh, in the book of Isaiah 62, he says, give my servants, I mean, give my watchmen no rest until Jerusalem had been established. And here lately, to be quite honest with you, I've been feeling that spirit of restlessness, man, all right? And I can't figure out why, but until the most I put it up on my mind, it's like, listen, give my servants no rest. Right, because there's there's truly a work to be done here in these latter days. And, and as we're talking about in this video, right, that understanding the nature of prophets and pro the nature of prophesying, I'm prophesying, they're not on the scene for a long time. Right. So our people, they, they've been taking a, a, a advantage of, you know, um, of these videos, which is good. Right. But don't don't think that this is going to be here forever. Right. Because pretty soon Esau is going to make his move you know, shut down the internet, particularly YouTube, right? And and a lot of the brothers, you know what I'm saying, including myself, we've been attacked by YouTube already, you know, even when we shouldn't have. We, we, we make sure that we decode or we code our words just right to where we don't uh, put anything out there in that algorithm to take our videos down, but somehow, right, we still get strikes, videos still get taken down, right? Because this is, this is by default, this is really all the most hot. Right. He's withdrawing his word. Right. Because we're going to get a few accounts out where he literally told his prophecy. Hey, just at this point, just shut up. Don't even reprove them anymore. Right. Because there's a time to speak and there's a time to to talk. I mean, to, and it's a time to speak and not and time to not speak. Right. So let's get this real quick. This is Second Chronicles 36 and 15 says, and Yahweh God, their fathers sent to them by his messengers rising up the times and sending because he had compassion on his people. That's why he's doing this, <laughs> because he understands that his wrath, it's horrible, right? When he sent his wrath the first time upon the whole inhabitants of the whole world, he killed everything, man, right? But he has a, a, he has a, a certain small remnant, you know, that he wants to preserve. That's that compassion on, on that particular people that he's, that he's seeking to save, right? And that's why he's raising up prophets and teachers in these last days. Right, because it says he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. What's his dwelling place? Israel, man. Right, and we're we're people before we're land. Right, he says. But this is their reaction to him, verse sixteen. But they mocked the messengers of God. You see, we get that all the time. Right? Oh, you're just a Bible thumper, you know, or you're taking this too serious, or that stuff ain't gonna come true, you know. Oh, just, they've been saying that years and years and years. Yeah, you're mocking the messengers, man. But there's nothing new under the sun, right? <laughs> he says, but they mock the messengers of God and despise his words, right? How do you despise his words today? You don't believe in his book and you don't, and you don't believe in what his men are telling you. You're despising his words. He says, and misuse his prophets. Yeah, you're exploiting the prophets. You're, you're making merchandise of the people. You're, you're mocking them, right? You're doing all types of uh, profaneness, man. Until the until the chosen men of God, he says, until the wrath of Yahweh rose up against his people till there is no remedy. Yeah. And that's something that's coming soon, man. Right. In the form of Jacob's trouble. Right. And that hour of temptation is coming upon the whole world. All right. So let's get this real quick. It's first Corinthians one and twenty one. Says for after that, in in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. You see, <laughs> And that's why they don't understand what in the heck is going on right now. They don't understand who these men are that the Most High just rose up, right, to, to edify and reprove these people, right? Because in their wisdom, they didn't know God. They didn't know anything about God. They don't know his ways, right? He says, but it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So these prophecies is only here to save those that believe, right? Because everybody's hearing us prophesy, everybody's hearing us teach, right? When you upload a video, that video is being viewed in China, India, Russia, wherever, man, Australia, right? But this, this message of warning is to save them that believe, right? <laughs> Look at the nature of, of, of Noah, man. How many people were saved? Eight people. It was to save them which believe. The whole world heard Noah preach, man. They heard Noah teach and prophesy, right, for a long duration, well, for a short duration of time, right, 
but it's only to save those who should believe, right? So let's get this real quick. The book Ecclesiastes 3. Let's see. Man, what verse was it? It's a lot, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, we just start from the top. This is Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. To everything there is a season, all right, and, and, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which was planted, and a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Now, we'll skip down to the part. Yeah, here it goes. I'm going to skip down to verse 7. It says, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, right? And this is the key point I want to get. This is the key verse I want to get at, right? There's a time to speak and there's a time to keep silence, right? Obviously, right now is the time to speak, right? But the time to speak is a very short time. And when I say speak, I'm meaning particularly teaching, prophesying. Right, because we understand once the Israelites, once we get into our kingdom, man, we're not going to be teaching our neighbor anymore. Know you, uh, know, know the Lord. All right. So obviously, this is a time to be speaking and teaching. Right. But we understand that this is a short duration of time. All right. And these, um, as a matter of fact, let me get this real quick. This is Proverbs 29 and 13, 29 and 18. All right says and where there is no open i mean it's a lot where there is no vision the people perish but he that keepeth the law happy is he yeah and when you go into that word vision let's look at what it says vision it's kazan in the hebrew it says oracle prophecy divine communication yeah so vision is what a prophecy is divine communication so let's read that again it says where there is no vision or prophecy the people perish. That's why when we read in the book of 2 Chronicles 36, verse 16 says that he gave you those men because he had compassion. He didn't want you to perish, right? So let's read that again. Where there's no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he, right? So can we ever recount a, a time through reading the Bible in history where there was no vision? Well, absolutely. Let's look at one real quick. Because this is coming soon, man, huh? in the in the form of the famine of the word, right? But here's an example of it. This is First Samuel chapter three and one. It says, "And the child Samuel ministered unto Yahweh before Eli, and the word of Yahweh was precious in those days. There was no open vision translated. There's no open prophecy, right? <laughs> so it said because there's no open vision or no open prophecy, the word of Yahweh was precious, right?" Let's look at that word precious. It's your car. And it means valuable, prized, weighty, rare. Yeah. And that's what the word of God is about to be once again. It's about to be rare. <laughs> and, and if something is rare, if it's valuable, if it's if it's um if it's prized, how do you treat that thing, right? You take care of it, right? You you uh you polish it up, right? You Keep it close to your bosom, right? And that's what the word of God is about to really be like right now. Right now, it's not rare, right? You have brothers flooding the uh, flooding the, uh, the YouTube channels and, and the internet with all types of edif edification right now. So obviously, the Most High God's word, word is not rare, right? But we're reading something right now. We're reading an account to where his word was rare at one particular time. Let's read it again. And the child sent 1 Samuel 3 and 1. And the child Samuel ministered unto Yahweh before Eli, and the word of Yahweh was precious in those days, meaning rare. There was no open vision. Yet when we went into that word vision, it meant divine communication or prophecy, right? So wherever there is no divine communication or prophecy, the word of God is rare, right? And if something is hard to find, <laughs> listen, man, you're going to be searching up and down to and fro looking for that thing. Right. And you only look for things that has that has some type of valuable 
uh, you know, has some type of, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Value to it, right? All right, so let's look at this. Come on, let's get second address. Second address, 12. Let's say it was, uh, Second measure is 12 and yep, we'll start right here. Second measure is 12 and 41. So this was after Ezra had went to go receive a prophecy or a vision from the Most High and he came back to his people, the Israelites obviously, and this was their reaction. So this is second measure is 12 and I'm gonna start at verse, um, I'm gonna start at verse 40. It says, and it came to pass when all the people saw that the seven days were passed, and I not came again into the city, they gathered them all together from the least unto the greatest and came unto me and said, what, have we offended thee? And what evil have we done against thee that you forsook, forsook us and sit us here in this place, right? So the people, right, they were like, Ezra, why did you just leave us like that, right? <laughs> so they were seeking after Ezra because obviously him and something that he had was something that they wanted. Right, it was something that was valuable, it was something that was precious, and that was none other than the word of God, that that prophecy. Right, verse forty-two, he says, "For all the prophets, you only are left of us as a cluster of the vintage, and as a candle in a dark, and as a and as in a candle in a dark place." Yeah, that's exactly what the words and the prophecies of Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai is, man. It's like a candle in a dark place. We live in Babylon the Great, man the land of the darkness. Everything is covered up. We didn't know who we were. I was covered up. We didn't know who this man was. He was covered up. We didn't know what this land was called, which is actually Babylon. That was covered up. <laughs> Everything was covered. This is the land of the darkness, right? So these words and, and the men that God rose up, they're known as what? A candle in a dark place. They bring light to things. They expose things, right? He says, and as a haven or a ship, Preserve from the tempest. Yeah, just like Noah. Noah built a ship to preserve his people from that tempest, from that storm. And that's also what the words of God and his men are like. They're like a safe haven, right? That's why we find ourselves uh, cleaving to our elders, getting uh, uh, taking heed to the, to the words of, uh, coming out their mouth, man. Because it's like a safe haven. It's like a ship to us in this tempest, in this world, man. Because Esau is known as a flood. When you read Isaiah 59, right? <laughs> and so these words is that arc of safety, man. All right. So let's get this real quick in, uh, in Ezekiel 3. Ezekiel 3. I'll type that in. Ezekiel 3. And I'm going to start at verse. Yeah, I'm going to start verse 24. It says, and this is the most high God speaking to uh, Ezekiel. He says, then the spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet and spake with me and said unto me, go, shut thyself within thine house. Now, where did the most high God first tell his prophets and his servants and his teachers to be? Out on the street corners, right? In the highways and in the hedges, right? But now he's telling him to go inside your house. When someone goes inside the house in an instant, and the instant that they shut their door, what do they have just done? They've excluded themselves from the outside world. <laughs> and that's never a pretty thing whenever a prophet or a teacher does that. Because at that point, hey, man, now that candle has just removed itself. Now you're out there in the dark. All right. Verse 25, he says, but thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee and shall bind thee with them. And thou shalt, know, thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make your tongue cleave to the roof of your mouth. What does that mean? I mean, the most high God is going to make him shut up, right? Your tongue just stuck to the top of your mouth. And the most high God did that. He says that you shall be dumb, meaning he can't speak. And thou shall not be to them a reprover, right? I <laughs> meaning a corrector, for they are a rebellious house, you see? And so, once again, there's nothing new under the sun. And we're, we're starting to get a glimpse of that right now, man. I was just talking to my beloved brother, Nakawam, on the phone before I got on this. 
And I asked him, I was like, man, is it just me or does it seem like <laughs> no sooner than when all these, you know, videos and things start flooding the internet, you can kind of see a little withdrawal now. He was like, yeah, man, I feel that too. I feel that too. I was like, I just had to make sure I was the only one seeing that, man, because then it reminded me. And that's what, that's why the spirit got upon me to get up and do this lesson. Because just to warn you all, listen, don't take this time period, you know what I'm saying, for granted. Soak up all this, these, these words of, of warnings and, and corrections and, you know, admonishings for your benefit, because this is what's going to save your soul. Because this was given to you from compassion from your heavenly father, man. Right. But when we don't listen to it, he's going to obviously make the make the mouths and the, and the tongues of the prophets that cleave to the roof of their mouth. Right. So we won't be a reprover anymore. Right. And what is that going to cause? There you have the famine of word at that point, man. You got the famine of word at that point. Let's let's go there real quick. Amos 5 and 11. And it says, for as much, therefore, as you're treading. No, I'm sorry. Amos, I want to get Amos. Uh, Amos 5 and 11. Amos 8 and 11. It's a lot. Amos 8 and 11. He says, behold, the days come. I mean, this is going to be future tense. Say, if you have a power that I will send a famine in the land. All right. Not a famine of bread, nor a famine for thirst, but of the hearing of the words of Yahweh. And when does that happen? When he removes his teachers and his, uh, and his uh, preachers and his prophets off of those street corners and they shut themselves in their house. All right. <laughs> there you have embarked upon your time of the famine of the word. All right, which is soon to come to pass, man. All right, so, so with that, I just want to say shallow on. Hope it was edifying.